God is the true vine and we are the branches connected to God, connected to bear fruit, connected to God or we wither away, connected to God or useless. We come to worship God, which is the true vine. God, teach us how to remain connected so that we might bear good fruit. true vine and my father is the gardener. He prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. I am the vine. You are the branches. If, if a man remains in me, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, he can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, 
ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. This is my Father's glory, that you will bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and on the way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading from the book of Isaiah. The spirit told Philip to go to that chariot and stay near it. They came to some water and the eunuch asked to be baptized and he gave orders for the chariot to be stopped. When they came up out of the water, the spirit, the spirit took Philip away. The eunuch went on his way rejoicing. It's not often that one is presented with two passages that provide very conveniently, first, a theory, and secondly, the practical outworking of that theory. I'm going to begin with the passage from John, which I think contains the theory. Put simply, the only way to bear good fruit is to remain always connected to Jesus. Then I'm going to talk about the passage from Acts, the practical outworking of the theory, which shows us that if you are connected with Jesus, you, sh you just might find yourself riding in a covered wagon with all sorts of unusual people. In John chapter 15, we have this very well-known image of God being the gardener. Jesus being the vine and we, the branches that are part of the vine. Picture for a moment a vine. It could be any plant with vine-like tendencies. We presume that this teaching must be about the grapevine because it talks about the fruit that it will bear. And in first century Palestine, vines were for growing grapes to make wine. But clematis or wisteria or jasmine or Virginia creeper are all climbing vines. This image of God being the gardener and Jesus the vine and us the branches has to do with one long line of nourishment. Keep connected and the good stuff flows. Verse four says, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Of course, in this passage, there are references to pruning because as any good gardener knows, pruning is vital for growth. But pruning is not the main message for us today. The main message today is about being connected. Verse three reads that we, the branches, are already clean because of the word spoken to us. The careful tending by the gardener has already happened. We have been pruned and all the dead wood has been removed. We are clean and ready for use. You and I don't have to worry or stress about bearing fruit. We have been made clean through the word and if we remain connected, we will discover that the fruit will come. Apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. With Jesus, we can bear extraordinary fruit. And as I have already said, it isn't about our effort. It's about Jesus and what he can do through us. He is the plant that sends up the vital life-giving nourishment, and we will receive it as long as we stay connected. Let the words of Jesus remain in our hearts and souls, and we will bear fruit as his disciples.
amid the world, a bleak wilderness, a vineyard grows with promise green, the planting of the Lord himself. His love selected this terrain, his vine with love he planted here to bear the choices for him. We are the branches chosen dear. And though we feel the dresser's knife, we are the objects of his care. For him we draw the juice of life. From him supply his winery, for him supply his winery, with fruit from which true joys derive. Vine, keep what I was meant to be, your branch, your rich life in me. So now ask yourself, now I ask myself, okay, what does this fruit look like and what does this mean for me? We turn to the passage in Acts. He is one of the best stories, here is one of the best stories in Acts that show us what happens when you stay connected with Jesus. Following the stoning of Stephen, great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem and all except the apostles were scattered. And so Philip goes down to a city in Samaria where he tells people about Christ. He does miraculous signs and the people all pay close attention to what he says. So even though Saul is doing his best to eradicate the fled the fledgling church, Philip is so connected to Jesus that he can't stop preaching the gospel even though fellow Christians in Jerusalem are being dragged from their houses and thrown into prison. When, they, when the sap is flowing in our veins, we can't keep our mouths shut. So Philip is connected. He has a direct line to God. And the spirits tell him to go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. He meets an Ethiopian eunuch in his chariot, walks alongside the chariot, hears the Ethiopian reading scripture, is invited into the chariot, which was probably a covered wagon with four wheels, to explain the meaning of the passage, speaks about Jesus, and finally baptizes the eunuch before going on to further preach in other towns. Think about it. We have to seriously consider how amazing this story is. Try to picture it in your mind. Historians tell us that the road was paved so that a chariot would easily travel on it. Is it possible that the incident takes place in the middle of the day? The phrase south may be taken as meaning at noon. So in the midday heat on a wilderness road, a chariot containing a stranger who is exotic, powerful and pious, rolls along and Philip keeps pace with it. And here's the man inside reading from the book of Isaiah. The man is black from Ethiopia. So to Greek and Romans, he has literally come from the southern edge of the world. We also know he is either a prolocyte, a Gentile converted to Judaism, or a God-fearer, a Gentile who adheres to the Jewish monotheism and piety. But here's a sad thing. In spite of his piety, he will have been excluded from the temple. He is a eunuch. Probably, literally, we don't know for certain, but because of this sexual difference, he will have been excluded from the temple and from Jewish worship. So here we have a man for who is different because of his skin color and because, of, because he is a sexual minority. And Philip finds himself welcoming him into the Christian faith. The fact that this convert to Christianity is from a sexual minority and a different race, ethnicity, and nationality surely calls Christians to be radically inclusive and welcoming. And Philip was radically inclusive and welcoming because he was connected to Jesus and could therefore be a conduit to, pa to pass on grace and mercy and acceptance of others. When human beings connect with Christ and they can't help but find themselves connecting to all others, because for Jesus, there is no barrier. <laughs> Thank you. 
in this place, new light is streaming. Now in the dark is the dark now is the darkness vanished away. See in this space our fears and our dreaming, brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Gather to us now and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of our name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in, the rich and the haughty. Gather us in, the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lowly. Give us the courage to enter the song. Here we will take the wine and the water. Here we will take the breath, the bread of new birth. Here you shall call your sons and your daughters. Call us in you to be salt for the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion. Give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion. Lives that are holy and hearts that are true. Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven light years away, but here in this place the new light is shining. Now is the kingdom, now is the day. Gather us in and hold us forever. Gather us in and make us your own. Gather us in, all peoples together. Fire of love in our flesh and our bones. Fire of love in our flesh and our bones.
We don't know what was going through Philip's mind, but I would like to suggest that because he was a branch well and truly attached and drawing nourishment from the vine, he reached out to the beloved Ethiopian eunuch just as he reached out to anyone the spirit led him to. He reached out and loved the Ethiopian eunuch just as he reached out to anyone the spirit led him to. And it just shows that allowing the spirit of Jesus to flow through you can lead to some pretty radical adventures. Do we fail to see the fruit that is promised because we fail to really connect with Jesus? When we connect with the vine, we will find that we connect with all those who are marginalized, segregated, and ostracized. Being connected to the vine means that our hearts are open. And of course, we instinctively know, don't we, that if we reach out to connect with someone, we might just find ourselves getting involved. When we connect, we walk in someone else's shoes and then we understand what that person is going through. So we ask ourselves, how do we connect with the vine? And I hope you will forgive me for simplifying something that is of course deeply profound, but I suggest you just hold out your hand. Hold hands with Jesus and you will find that you will end up holding hands with all sorts of extraordinary people. As we hold hands with one another, we hold hands with Jesus. We are now attached to the vine and we can feel the nourishment flow. I invite you to listen to two lines from a song written by a performance poet, Luke Nephew. He wrote these lines for the Black Lives Matter movement. I can hear my brother crying, I can't breathe. Now I'm in the struggle singing, I can't leave. I can hear my brother crying, I can't breathe. Now I'm in the struggle singing, I can't leave. Holding hands, we are now connected and the nourishing breath flows through us. We connect with, him, with one another and know that a brother can't breathe. Once we are connected with them, we can't leave them. And like Philip in the chariot, we reach out and unfold them in the love of Jesus.
Lord, our God, loving parent, you've given us your son, Jesus. Jesus Christus, the true vine of life and our source of strength. Help us to live his life as living branches attached to the vine and to bear plentiful fruit, fruit of justice, goodness, and love. Let our union with him become visible in our openness to one another and in our unity as brothers and sisters that he, that he may be visibly present among us now and forever. Amen. Thank you.